On this corner of downtown Atlanta sits a treasure trove of knowledge. The Auburn Avenue Research Library on African American culture and history is home to story and tales of the mighty past of black history in Atlanta. This is a repository of not only, you know, the black history of Atlanta and the black history of Georgia, but black history nationwide. Dr. Maurice Hobson, a Georgia State professor, author, and Atlanta historian, has spent countless hours here studying the past and its impact on today. He met me there to talk about Atlanta's history and influence. She says it goes back to General Sherman's burning of Atlanta, with newly freed slaves establishing themselves here afterward. That, along with white missionaries, laid the groundwork for Atlanta to become an educational capital for black people through several historically black colleges and universities. This becomes a place to where freedmen could come and get an education. And what education meant is that they could uh, create their own contracts. They could operate in their best interest. This led to the Sweet Auburn District, a black business thoroughfare, which further advanced the progress of blacks in Atlanta. We have black education. We have black economics. The third uh, aspect of that was the rise of black political empowerment and electoral politics. In the federal court case of King v. Chapman, with the ruling banning all white voting primaries in Georgia from blocking black voters, opening the door for hundreds of thousands of black voters to have more voting freedom. And of course, they're concentrated here in Atlanta, Georgia. So when John Wesley Dobbs and Austin T. Walden found the Atlanta Negro Voters League, what it does is any uh, politician or someone seeking office who is uh, statewide, they have to come to Atlanta and court the black vote. More blacks began to make gains, shaping and being elected to political offices, giving them another avenue to transform their lives and communities. Sometimes I don't think people in Atlanta understand what we have here. <laughs> Dr. You Bernice know, King, daughter of Dr. Martin Luther National King Jr. Jr. and a civil State. rights leader herself, says black people in Atlanta frequently worked with business leaders and other people of influence to make change. That legacy of work lives today with those historically black institutions of higher education. Black businesses like the still existing Atlanta Life Insurance and Citizens Trust Bank, the faith community and scores of black entrepreneurs. We have been um, a city that it literally was, was too busy to hate and did not let um, anything like hatred and, and racism stand in the way of rising to an occasion. Elizabeth Omalami, daughter of civil rights activist Hosea Williams and CEO of Hosea Helps, also points to that work at brokering deals. People say Atlanta is the cradle of civil rights and it's according to how you look at it because you never had to have a march or anything violent or anything like that happen in Atlanta because they had a system where they would negotiate, go in the back room, make the deal, and things would rather happen that way. But she says there's still work to be done for those who have been left behind on a humanitarian level, a message for future change makers, young and old. Don't look for anybody else. You be that leader and you can make a difference.